storm passes by. All right, if you have your Bible, turn to 1 Timothy 4. First Timothy chapter number four and verse number one. Now the Spirit, capital S, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd anoint the messenger now as I attempt to bring your word. I pray you'd bless that holy word as it goes forth, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Of all the times that I've tried to get up and preach, I'm going to tell you this morning that I firmly feel like this is one of the most important messages that I'll ever preach to you. And the reason I do is because I am firmly convinced that what's happening right now, right before us, is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, and we're watching it as it accelerates into this one-world religion and one-world government that's prophesied in Revelation 13. This past week, I happened to be listening to the radio, local religious radio station, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee, when I could not believe what I was listening to. The song came on, and here are the words. Partial, not all of them, but here are the words. Here comes a Baptist, here comes a Jew, There goes a Mormon and a Muslim too. I see a Buddhist and a Hindu. I see a Catholic and I see you. We're all God's children. We're all God's children. Why can't we be one big happy family? You like the day and I like the night. He's into country and he isn't. There's folks on the left and on the far right, but that doesn't mean that we have to fight. We're all God's children. All God's children, yea, We're all God's children. Why can't we be one big happy family? Now, if I'd heard that from a bunch of liberals, uh, you know, and some marching out here on the street or somewhere, uh, I could understand it in context, but that's not where it came from. It came from a religious radio station right here in Knoxville, Tennessee, that's been around for a long time. And I thought to myself, now, do you know what you're playing? The, whoever, whoever, is, whoever was there at the board uh, and played this thing, I, first thing I asked myself, do you know what you're playing? And then I listened to the words very carefully, and I got on the Internet and I traced it down, made sure that I got this right. And it is, we're all God's children lyrics. And this was played on a local religious uh, radio station right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Here's the bottom line. If the stations now, these religious radio stations, are going to start playing ecumenicism, one world religion, where we're all in it together, and Christ is no different from any of the rest of them, folks, we have arrived. We have arrived. We're here. We're here. We're at the moment where the great apostasy is going to manifest itself, and you're going to see it happen. You've already seen it in some churches. I've, pre- I've preached to you before about the emerging church movement. I've told you about some of their theology. You know, this is nothing new with them. And uh, I've told you before, there's ever kind of a Baptist under the, under the sun. And so I'm not up here this morning to propagate the Baptist church. But I am up here to, this morning to preach Christ and Him crucified. The Bible said there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. He is the foundation of the church of the living God. I want you to understand something, and I want you to understand it, please. The church of God is not a building. It's not a Baptist. It's not a movement. It's not not all these peripheral things out here that are associated with the church in one way. In other words, they couldn't exist if it were not for the church. It's not them. But the church of God is a body of born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what do you mean by that, preacher? I mean that if you are born of the Spirit of God, then you are a member of the church of the living God. That's fact. And the only one that has anything to do with your new birth that puts you into the body of Christ is the Lord Jesus Christ. He builds His church. We don't do it. It's, his, it's in His hand. He builds it. And so, therefore, nothing could be more 
uh, could be more clear in my mind as I look at this apostasy than to understand that, that I don't care how many people in Knoxville, it not, doesn't matter to me if 99% of all the people that go to church every Sunday in this town, if they subscribe to this, if this is what they believe, friend, they're fake. Their church is fake and they're fake Christians. Now you say, well, that's mean, preacher. No, I'm trying to tell you the truth. Republican, Democrat had nothing to do with it. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Wake up! Wake up! They're playing this garbage on your local religious radio station. And they're trying by doing that to brainwash you and recruit you into the church of the Antichrist. And believe me, his churches are all over this town. And if you rebel against this, what I've said, and you do not, you say, well now preacher, I believe we ought to love one another. And this is, well the Bible said God so loved the world. That He gave His only begotten Son. If God didn't love mankind, I don't know what did, but Christ came into this world. And the fact that He came brought judgment upon man. The simple fact that He was here, don't say a word. The fact He was here was judgment on sinners because God sent His only begotten Son. So I want you to understand today that what I'm going to preach is very important. It's very, very important. You are faced with a situation where you must make a choice today. Everybody in this auditorium, whoever's watching by the internet, who will watch this later, who will see this on television, who will hear this on a, on a CD, you must make a choice. You are either for Christ or you're against Him. You say, preacher, I want Christ and I want Buddha. No, you can't have both. You can't have both. There is one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There is none other. There is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. He is Lord, and beside Him there is none other. The book of Revelation makes it very clear that Christ is the judge on the great white throne, and He will judge all men by the word of the living God. Now here's their doctrine. When Christians ask if you believe you are a sinner, respond with, We have not perfectly realized our divine potential, but are still in the process of unfolding it through meditation and higher states of consciousness. Boy, if that's not religious mumbo-jumbo, I don't know what is. But that's what you get out of people. Do you know why? Listen to them. Listen to their preachers. Look at their doctrine. How many churches in this town are preaching the new birth anymore? How many? You know why they don't preach the new birth? Because when you start preaching the new birth, you're telling men they're sinners, and you're telling men that Christ is the only way that they can be born again. That's exactly what you're doing. So they refuse to preach the new birth. It's all about how you can better yourself, how you can have this relationship. It's all superficial, surface relationships with God, but it could be Buddha, it could be Confucius, it could be a Hindu God, it could be Vishnu, Brahma, or, or, or any of the gods of the Hindus. It could be any of them. And what you've done is put the Lord Jesus Christ on the same level as them. And it won't work. He will not be on the level with any of them. Kneel to your own self, they say. Honor and worship your own being. Chant the mantra always going on within you. Meditate on your own self. God dwells within you as you. You say, preacher, that's so wild and crazy. Nobody believes that in the church. You kidding? Are you serious? You're living in a make-believe world if you don't know that. These people believe they are the sum total of everything. This is why there's so much narcissism today. This is why there's so much about self today. It's all about me. That's what it's about today. That's why everybody today, my friend, is looking at themselves and the Savior is within them. Their salvation is them. They are it. And this is what you're getting and the preachers feed that. The preacher's feet it week in and week out. If you get a preacher that gets up in front of you 
And every last one of His messages is all about how God wants to bless you and how all you need to do is to understand the great potential that's within you and how God has all these things laid out for you and all you have to do is learn the secret and you can just tap into it and you'll be so wonderful. This is exactly what you're hearing and this is what's coming from the pulpits in America. And my friend, it is pure poison. I must add, listen to this. I look for inspirational messages from a variety of sources besides Jesus. Our folks get to hear words of wisdom from great prophets and spiritual leaders like Buddha, Mohammed, Yogananda, and the Dalai Lama. Have you checked lately to see what the last release from the Dalai Lama was? Have you got on his website and his blog to see what great spiritual truths the Dalai Lama can give you? I don't waste my time. The Dalai Lama has nothing to say that I want to hear. When it comes to spiritual issues, now it may be an issue of Tibet and China, what's going on over there politically, that may be of interest. But when it comes to spiritual things, the Dalai Lama has nothing to say that I want to hear. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. The only one that can do anything for me spiritually is the Lord Jesus Christ. I must add, though, that though I don't believe making disciples must equal making adherence to the Christian religion, it may be advisable in many, not all, circumstances to help people become followers of Jesus and remain within their Buddhist, Hindu, or Jewish context. A leader of the emerging church gives out his great wisdom. We need to become aware of the cosmic Christ, which means recognizing that every being has within it the light of Christ. Now here's what they say. Something very powerful is happening. It's emerging. We are witnessing a spiritual revolution of great magnitude in the whole world. The rise of a new school of mysticism within Christianity. It is growing year by year. I agree. There is a definite powerful move of the Spirit, but it's not the Holy Ghost. So here's what they do. They attack your Bible. Because if what they're preaching and what these religious stations are playing, if that's true, then this Bible is no more than just another religious book that can be interpreted any way you please. It's no longer the Word of God. The absolute Judge and God Almighty, He has revealed Himself in this book, and that's not so anymore. And then there's an attack on the Savior. If the Lord Jesus Christ is just one more Savior, He's just your faith tradition, if He's just part of the pantheon of gods, then the Lord Jesus Christ Himself was deluded when He was here 2,000 years ago and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father but by me. That's what He said. Then there's an attack on the believer. If, they, if what these people say is true, then you, as a believer, you've been deluded. You've been, you've been, you, you're, you're living in the mountains. You're living in the backwoods. You're living in the backwaters. You need to open your mind up and begin to receive the great spiritual truths of this generation. This is what they're telling you. This is what they're trying to feed into your mind. When you hear this garbage right here, here comes a Baptist, here comes a Jew. There goes a Mormon and a Muslim too. I see a Buddhist and a Hindu. I see a Catholic and I see you. We're all God's children. Now we may have our squabbles between the Baptist and the Methodist and the Presbyterians and the Lutherans and the Charismatics and the Pentecostals. We've got our squabbles, my dear friends. And in these churches, I believe you're going to find born-again believers scattered all over the place that make up the body of Christ. Yes! But my dear friend, a Buddhist and a Hindu and a Muslim has nothing in common with me whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. Then there's the message. This message is a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's all about pride and narcissism. It's about self. If you go to church week after week after week and you never come under conviction for the sins in your life, you never grow enough in the Scripture and the Holy Spirit to begin to realize that you need help. You need the blood of Christ. You need fellowship with God. And the only way to have that is to have a right understanding of who you are with God. But if you don't get that week after week after week, then you are in a narcissistic, self-loving, self-church. Then there's the man. The man. The man. You see, they attack the Bible. 
Then they attack, they attack the mess, then their message, and then there is the man. There is a Christ that is clearly set apart, a different Christ. I recommend, and I recommend this strongly, that you get my Sunday school lesson from this morning. I would, I, I recommend it. I recommend you get that Sunday school lesson and you listen to what I talked about in Sunday school today. Because what I talked about has a direct bearing on what I'm preaching to you this morning. There is a Christ that is not the true Christ. I want you to understand something. This Christ that is showing up in religion is an absolute, is a, is, is, is a, is a, is a counterpart to the true Christ. That's what he is. You have the true Christ and you have a false Christ. And that's where we are right now. People can't tell the difference between the two. He's a teacher. He answers to the dark questions of life about UFOs and the afterlife and the spirit world. Did you know that there is a fascination right now in this generation with the spirit world? You realize that? Do you realize that we have, we have atheists all over this country, yet they're fascinated with the spirit world? A man came to me the other day, or a woman came to me, I think it was. She came to me and she said, Preacher, she says, I know a police officer. She said, this police officer and his family just moved into a home. They moved into this home. Said when they moved into this home, they noticed a, 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 a hair, a brush, a hairbrush, just rise up and fly across the room. Just rise up and fly across the room. And then they said, preacher, that the little children said, mommy, who are all these people over here in this other room? Who are these people in this room? And after that, apparently mom and dad began to realize that they had a spirit problem in that home. Now, you can't put that under a microscope. You can't open up DNA and look into the spirit world. You have to deal with a spirit issue. You see, the third heaven opens up in Revelation chapter number 4. The third heaven opens up, and when it opens up, the Apostle John is caught up into the third heaven. A door, the Bible said, was opened in heaven. In Sunday school this morning, I told the folks that now they've revised the, the estimation. They say that there are two trillion galaxies in the universe. And they say that there are 200 billion suns like ours in our galaxy, the Milky Way. In plain words, these are astronomical figures that are beyond your wildest imagination. They'll blow your mind. All right? But the Bible said, I saw a door opened in heaven. In other words, it doesn't make a difference if there's trillions and trillions and trillions of stars out there. And I don't know that there are. But it doesn't matter. A door was opened in heaven. What's that? That's a spiritual door where the Apostle John could be caught up into the third heaven. Into the presence of Almighty God. It's like when you leave this world. If you leave it today or you leave it tomorrow. You leave this physical creation. And you go into the third heaven. If you're saved. You go into the third heaven. Into the presence of Almighty God. And you can't get there in a spaceship. You can't, you can't get there. As the old farmer says you can't get there from here. You can't get there. The only way you can get into the third heaven is to be carried spiritually by, as they did, the angels carried Abraham. As they spiritually carry you into the presence of God. But this generation is fascinated with the spiritual things. Fascinated. You know why? Because there's a hunger inside every man for God. There's a hunger in his soul for somebody bigger than him. He knows he's got a problem. He knows he's got a sin problem. I don't care how much he tries to explain it away, how he tries to bury it, or how he tries to put it under a microscope and explain it scientifically. He's got a problem. And that problem is sin. And the only one that can do anything for you when it comes to sin is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only one. Nobody else can. But they are fascinated with the occult. Now, why are they fascinated with the occult? As I said, because man has a desire in him for something spiritual. We live in a time of mad scientists. 
What's a mad scientist? A mad scientist is somebody who wants to find eternal life without the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Genesis, as I said in Sunday school this morning, the Lord God stopped them from eating of the tree of the fruit of, of life because He said, if you eat of this, you'll live forever and you'll live forever in a fallen state. And dear friend, you do not want to live forever. Would you want to live forever in the state you're in right now? Even being born again, you still got that old man. He's corrupt by nature. That would be the worst curse to ever come down on your soul. Can you imagine burying all of your children, burying their children, burying their children, burying their children, and live on and live on and live on and live on, and all that you would go through through, e through ages on this earth and never die? No! When God gets ready to call me home, I'm ready to go home. When I finish my course, that's when I'm ready to go home. I've told the Lord time and time again, God, when you get ready for me, I'm ready to go home. When you are ready and I'm finished, I'm ready to leave this world. I do not want to live forever in this fallen body and this old man that constantly tries to drag me down. Thank God! For eternal life through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. For there's something inside me that is different from that old man that says to me, I know whom I have believed. I know where I'm going. I know I'll live forever. But not the way I am. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mad scientist. That's what CERN, molecular biology, artificial intelligence, and all of that. That's what it's about. It's about man saying there is no God, that He is God, and that He's going to live forever. And do it Himself. And He's going to do it through science and technology. And now they're working to create eternal life. And that will be the biggest curse you could ever put on anyone. There is a clear and total rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ and of God, the God of the Bible. Yes, sir. A clear and total rejection of the God of the Bible. I marvel at how people get out and they march, you know. I'm all for anybody demonstrating in this country. I'm the first one to preach freedom of speech. I am so anti-political correctness. It's not, I despise these people on these college campuses that have only one view. And you don't come on there. You're, you're a Nazi or any. You're, you're, they're going to brand you if you don't agree with them. That's garbage. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? And so they get out and they march and they demonstrate. Fine. Good for them. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If you are for killing babies... You have already lost me with your message. If you are a baby killer, I don't want to hear you talk about love. I don't want to hear you talk about sacrifice. I don't want to hear you talk about rights. I don't want to hear you talk about equality. If you are a baby killer, you have no idea what you're doing or what you're talking about. You've been brainwashed. Amen. You've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed. I read a letter from a lady just a few days ago said she was into abortion. She was personally involved in the abortion of many children. Personally involved with it. And therefore her conscience ate her up. She got right with God and her conscience continued to eat her, destroy her, her past because of what she'd done in abortion. I can imagine. I can imagine something like that. How it could, how it, how it could work on you. I can't, you know, that's, that's a little human being. That's a human life. But she finally got victory through the power of the blood and through the forgiveness of God and accepted it. This is after she got saved. She finally got victory. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. It's an awful thing. It's a terrible thing to live your life under condemnation. And some of you are living under condemnation. And Satan's going to beat you to death with your past or for some, some sin or whatever it is. He's going to beat you to death until you learn the secret of victory. And what is the secret of victory? Christ is the secret. God made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin. In plain words, He made Christ to be the sin of all mankind, every sin. The, he, is, he is the one who, when He went to the cross at Calvary, represented every single man. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, for He died in my place. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. But your conscience 
Your past will eat you up. So these people get out here and they demonstrate and they march up and down the street and they think that they're standing for the right and for the good. No, they're not. You get on your TV and you... I watch the news and they'll talk about how that they've, they've uh, rescued some dogs. You know, well, good for rescuing the good old dogs. Somebody, people get the wrong idea that, that I have about dogs. They think, well, you don't like dogs? Oh, I'm all for dogs. Like I said, I had every old stray in the world come in the house. My brother and I took it in when I was just a kid. And dogs do a lot of work in this world. Dogs protect people. Dogs have saved lives. There's nothing wrong with a dog till you start licking it in the face. And then you got a problem. Big time. Might I remind you what dogs lick? <laughs> so when you when you lick that dog in the face, you're licking what it licks. <laughs> I'm, 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 I told you before. I need to tell you tell you again. Nine times out of ten, if they show a dog in a commercial, they'll show some dog licking somebody in the mouth. How many of you noticed that? Do you know why? They are taking you down and they're raising the animal up. And that's part of the brainwashing and that's part of this new, this new spirituality among people. You can pet your dogs and carry them around and, and have them for company and go hunting with them. That's all fine and that's all good. But stop. I hope you're not. I hope you're not. Or oh, have mercy. I mean, that makes me want to throw up. That's the truth. It does. It, it, it makes me want to puke. It's just, it's just. I never saw that for my first 30 or 40 years in this world. I never saw a dog lick somebody in the mouth. And now all of a sudden, that's all you see. That ought to wake you up. It ought to tell you something going on out here. Yes, sir, there's something going on. And the, and the fact that people get offended with this, is it amazes me. I marvel at it because they shouldn't offend you. Good to have a dog. Nothing wrong with dogs. But have a dog put the dog in its place. A dog's a dog. It's not a human being. It's not a man. A dog is a dog. And that's all it is and that's all it'll ever be. A cat, whatever else you might have. Hope you don't have any big snakes as a pet. But some things are just, you know, God gives you enough wisdom. Leave them alone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'd use what I've said this morning, Lord, for the glory of God. Bless the folk. Let your word take heart, take root. Lord, may they not forget this one point that I try to make to them now. That right now, already here in Knoxville, Tennessee, they are playing on the radio station, on the religious radio stations, they are playing the music and the lyrics to brainwash people into accepting the religion of the Antichrist. It's already here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.